The many positive contributions to the Mount Vernon community by the Ariel Foundation are appreciated. But those who promote the gas industry have chosen to become deeply involved in the public policy matter of approval of the Fraser Solar Project. This video acknowledges the democratic right to do so, but poses questions about the manner in which that right has been exercised, reveals unsettling implications in regard to suppressing the similar democratic rights of others, and points to clear indicators that the gas industry involvement is being pushed by deeper motives than what actually best serves the public interest. The organization Knox Smart Development, abbreviated as KSD, was formed to oppose the solar farm. We see the beginning of a disturbing pattern in its sponsorship of what was billed as a town hall meeting in November at the Knox Theater building. The town hall concept originates from New England and prides itself on a fully transparent and democratic process. What you have here practice real democracy, real town meeting democracy. This event does not qualify. When someone attempted to take part with a pro-solar perspective, he was denied entry. This pattern escalated to an even more blatant anti-democratic stance at the April 4th public hearing. Before even a single person could testify, the attorney for KSD filed a formal motion calling for anyone outside Knox County to be banned from testifying. The hypocrisy is breathtaking. For its November event, KSD brought in a speaker all the way from the out-of-state Chicago-based Heartland Institute, and it was done not to serve the public interest, but to undermine it. Heartland is infamous for its efforts on behalf of the tobacco industry to blur the facts about the harmful impact of smoking. Your outfit with uh, your picture by Joseph Vast. Scroll down to the bottom. A fourth lie is that even moderate smoking is deadly. Skip a few lines. The fact that smoking in moderation has few, if any, adverse health effects has astounding importance in the tobacco debate. You stand by that? Actually, I do and has been doing the same on the climate crisis for two decades, flying in the face of a science consensus agreed to by no less than 195 countries. And this glaring double standard must also be considered. Neither of the two attorneys advocating the ban against involvement from outside the county even live in Knox County themselves. Such blatant acts of censorship inflict harm on the community. When conflicting views are suppressed, there is a much greater opportunity for misinformation to present itself as if it is an unchallenged and established fact, when in reality, it is not. Misinformation harms an entire community when its residents become pitted against each other in a strife that is unnecessary. We arrive at the most revealing part of this program, the most vociferous and loudly repeated concern advanced by KSD is that land should not be taken out of agricultural use. Here is the president of KSD speaking to that point. Me personally, I like to eat, okay? Uh, and I'd like my food to be affordable. But what's gonna to happen to all of that when we just continue to lose the farmland that we're losing? But on March 9th, the solar developer Open Road Renewables adopted that very concept by agreeing to open up a full 800 of the 840 acres for sheep grazing. This decision to continue agricultural use on the same land is illustrated in this clip from a separate video created by this same producer. A lot of families out there, a lot of people who are in the farming business that are giving up, it's gonna give a new hope for them. Especially in Texas, you have a lot of skeptics on the solar piece just because we are taking up the agricultural land with this energy. But once I figured out that we could combine agriculture and keep a lot of this country in, in ag production, it really kind of changed my mind on what, what we could do with this land and keep it in some ag production to feed America, but also uh, be able to generate energy at the same time. Plants underneath the panels tend to have higher leaf area, so that way they can capture more sunlight. So it had better nutritional values for them. The research is showing the untapped potential of what's been dubbed agrivoltaics. I think the key words are more food, better food, less water, extra revenue for the farm. It's a four-way win for, for farmers. The challenge is to generate crops and energy simultaneously and without conflict. 
a win-win is always welcome. But what about a win-win-win? Researchers say that's what's possible with agrivoltaics. The win-win-win here is the ability of agrivoltaics to increase food production, boost renewable energy production and achieve important water savings, all on the same piece of land. KSD seems unwilling to acknowledge that agricultural use would now continue and keeps repeating this now quite untrue claim about losing that land. This is not only disingenuous but leads to the necessity to ask a very direct question. Why is this happening? Can it be that there is some deeper agenda and ulterior motive that compels KSD to continue opposing Fraser no matter what? A link on an early version of its website leads directly to an entity called the Empowerment Alliance, abbreviated to TEA. TEA is a dark money group that actively supports the gas industry and spent over $1 million in the Ohio midterm election in 2022. The term dark money refers to the practice of exploiting loopholes in campaign finance law such that donations cannot be traced. People connected to this group have spoken out against renewable energy in Ohio. Nobody knows who they are. They call them dark money groups, and that's exactly what they are. Corporation funnels money to a dark money group. They send out postcards attacking the opponent. When that candidate gets elected, they support the agenda of the corporation. I don't know how to fight them. I can't pick up the phone and say, hey, what's your interest in candidate X? Because I don't know who they are. In order for economic development to thrive, natural gas is a must. According to the Cleveland Plain Dealer in an article entitled Lobbying and Dark Money, we're behind Ohio law rebranding natural gas as green energy. The Empowerment Alliance was actively involved in an effort to redefine natural gas to make it appear to be green energy. This became law and now completely distorts the renewable energy debate in Ohio. Natural gas, also known as methane, is not only usually obtained by a destructive and toxic process called fracking, but it is becoming an increasingly severe culprit in the release of greenhouse gases. Hydraulic fracturing, called fracking, is a way to access methane gas out of rock deep in the earth. This toxic cocktail requires millions of gallons of fresh water mixed with some of over 600 chemicals, including known carcinogens like lead, formaldehyde, and even more the fossil fuel industry won't disclose. Methane is a super pollutant. It's 86 times more disruptive to our climate than the carbon dioxide from coal burning power plants. When you add up the climate disruption, air pollution, poisoned water, and the damage to our health from fracking, it's clear methane gas is just another dirty fossil fuel, and we should leave it in the ground. When is the last time anyone has seen a fossil fuel industry apply its high-powered lobbying machine on behalf of maintaining access to food for hungry people? Was this issue seized because it resonated with some people and therefore served as a legitimate sounding prop to camouflage the more bald-faced reality? Issues like loss of agriculture mask a deeper conflict driven by a gas industry uncompromisingly opposed to solar farms because they are seen as cutting into profit margins. Far from being what is marketed as green energy, methane gas is a severe threat to life on Earth and the future of our children. The decision about the Fraser solar farm, especially since the agricultural use of land will be preserved, is a chance to protect their future. May their own voices speak to you. Three million years human evolution, two hundred years industrial pollution, one. One last chance for a green revolution. It's time to rise up, get our act together. This is so much more than changes in the weather. Don't mind. We say no.